St. Joseph, a role model for all workers. St. Joseph is the patron saint of fathers, husbands, workers, of a happy death, that is, dying in the arms of Jesus and Mary. He is the patron saint of the universal church. Everything that St. Joseph did for Jesus, he does for the church, the mystical body of Christ himself. If Mary is the mother of the church, St. Joseph is the foster father and guardian of the church. Let us pray to St. Joseph that we practice the virtues he practiced in the daily labors of family life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. We offer this Mass for each of your intentions, especially all those who are sick and suffering. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the fifth day of our Novena. And the theme is St. Joseph, the role model for all workers. We look into our lives and we ask ourselves, have I carried out the responsibility that God has entrusted in me with full faith and accountability to God? And for the times that we have failed, let us ask the Lord for his pardon and mercy. We say together, I confess, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy in us. May He forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Abraham was very rich in livestock, in silver and in gold. And Lot, who went with Abraham, also had 
flocks and herds and tents, so that the land could not support both of them dwelling together. For their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's livestock and the herdmen of Lot's livestock. At that time, the Canaanites and Perizzites were dwelling in the land. Then Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife between you and me and between your herdmen and my herdmen, for we are king's men. Is not the whole land before you? Separate yourself from me. If you take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if you take the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lord lifted up his eyes and saw that the Jordan Valley was well watered everywhere, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt, in the direction of Zoro. This was before the Lord destroyed Sadam and Gomorrah. So Lord chose for himself all the Jordan Valley and Lord journeyed east. Thus they separated from each other. Abraham settled in the land of Canaan, while Lord settled among the city of the valley and moved his tent as far as Sodom. Now the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord. The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northwards and southwards, and eastwards and westwards. For all the land that you see, I will give it to you and to your offsprings forever. I will make your offsprings as the dust of the earth, so that if one can count the dust of the earth, your offsprings also can be counted. Arise, walk through the length and the breadth of the land, for I will give it to you. So Abraham, moved his tent and came and settled by the oak of Mamre, which are at Hebron. And there he built an altar to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Our response to God's word is, O Lord, who may abide in your tent, Please repeat, O oh, Lord, who may abide, abide in, in your tent. tent. Whoever walks without fault, who does what is just, and speaks the truth from his heart, whoever does not slender with his tongue. Our response, O oh, Lord, Lord, who, who may abide, abide in, in your tent. tent. Who does no wrong to a neighbor, who casts no slur on a friend, who looks with scorn on the wicked, but honors those who fear the Lord. Our response, O, o Lord, Lord, who may, who may abide, abide in, in your, your tent. tent, who lends no money at interest and accepts no bribe against the innocent, such a one shall never be shaken. Our response, O, o Lord, Lord, who, who abide in your tent. In your tent. Yeah. Yeah.
The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give dogs what is holy, and do not throw your pearls before pigs, lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. So whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life. And those who find it are few. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's first reading, we see Abraham being a role model for all relationships because he gives the better part of the land to Lot. In other words, for Abraham, his priority is the Lord and his promise and his priority is also his relationship. He never allowed money, land, property to break that relationship. Brothers and sisters, in the gospel of today, Jesus brings before us Christian life. And he says, our faith and life in Christ is so precious like the pearls, that we cannot treat it harshly. We are also given the golden rule, do unto others what you would like to have them do to you. Let us reflect on our own lives and say, do I treat others in the same way that I would like them to treat me? And let us, in this Eucharist, Ask the Lord for this grace, that we may be able to set our priorities right, that we will give importance to our relationship with God and with one another more than anything else in this world. Amen. I give my hands to do your work, and Jesus, Lord, I give them will. Pray, brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept, accept the sacrifice of your hands, hands and the praise and, and the glory of his name for our good and good, and good of all his holy church. church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may advance towards eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on this, the feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived the only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, 
brought into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we all acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Oswald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from every evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a meaningful sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins, sins of the world, world have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. This is Jesus, the bread of life, who nourishes us with his grace. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Oh, what peace we 
Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, Lord, that having received your Son, born of the tender virgin, under sacramental signs, we may profess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who did teach the hearts of thy faithful people, by sending them the light of the Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things, and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort, through Christ our Lord. Amen. An act of contrition. My God, I believe in thee. I hope in thee, I love thee above all things, with all my soul, with all my heart, and with all my strength. I love thee because thou art infinitely good and worthy of being loved. And because I love thee, I repent with all my heart of having offended thee. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. Amen. For the intentions of the Holy Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Invocations to Our Lady. We fly to thy patronage, O Holy Mother of God. Despise not our petitions in our necessities, but ever deliver us from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. O Mother of Perpetual Sankar, thou whose very name inspires confidence, help me, O loving Mother, that I may love and serve God with all my heart, help me, O loving Mother, that I may never neglect prayer, help me, O loving Mother, in temptations against the holy virtue of purity, help me, O loving Mother, that I may quickly rise again, should I have the misfortune to fall into sin. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may labor zealously to get rid of my sinful habits. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may courageously resist the seductions of the world, evil companions, bad books and films. Help me, O loving Mother. 
that I may often and devoutly receive the sacraments and fulfill my Christian duties and the duties of my state. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may be patient and resigned in all trials and troubles of life. Help me, O loving Mother. In sickness and pain, in poverty and distress. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may not delay my conversion from day to day. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may ever love and serve Thee and invoke Thy assistance. Help me, O loving Mother. That I may be able to lead others to love, serve and pray to Thee. Help me, O loving Mother. When death is near and I am about to pass into eternity. Help me, O loving Mother. To my last hour, to my last breath, do Thou watch over me. Help me, O loving Mother. Pray for us, O Mother of Perpetual Succor, that we may be worthy the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O Almighty and Merciful God, who in order to assist the human race, has willed the Blessed Virgin Mary to become the Mother of Thy only begotten Son, grant we beseech Thee that by her intercession we may avoid the contagion of sin and serve Thee with a pure heart. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us at this moment offer up all our prayers and thanksgiving for the many favors that we have received through the intercession of Mother Mary. We also offer up our petitions and intercessions that through the intercession of Mother Mary, the Lord may grant our heart's desires. We pray in a special way for all those who are sick and suffering. We pray for all those who have asked for our prayers and all whom we have promised to pray for. We pray for our family, our brothers and sisters, our parents, our children, our siblings, And we pray for our own personal intentions that the Lord will grant the desires according to His will. Navina prayers. O Mother of Perpetual Sakha, Behold me, a miserable sinner at thy feet. I have recourse to thee and put my trust in thee. O Mother of mercy, have pity upon me. I hear thee call by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be then my refuge and my hope. Succor me for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch forth thy hand to me, a poor sinner who recommend and dedicate myself to thee as thy perpetual servant. I bless and thank God for having in his mercy given me this confidence in thee, the pledge, as I believe, of my eternal salvation. Alas, too often in past times have I miserably fallen because I had not recourse to thee. I know that with thy help I shall conquer. I know that thou wilt help me if I recommend myself to thee, but I fear less in the occasion of falling. I should cease to call upon thee and so should lose my soul. This then is the grace I seek from thee, and I beg of thee as far as I know how and can to obtain it for me, namely in the assaults of hell, always to have recourse to thee and say to thee, O Mary, help me, Mother of Perpetual Sucker, suffer me not to lose my God. Amen. Amen. Mother of Perpetual Sucker, pray for thy children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Mother of perpetual succor, pray for thy children. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen mother of perpetual succor pray for thy children hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb jesus holy mary mother of god pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death amen holy mary succor the miserable help the faint hearted cheer those that weep pray for the people be the advocate of the clergy intercede for all devout women let all feel thy aid who implore thy perpetual succor thou hast been made for us o lady a refuge a helper in need and tribulation let us pray o lord jesus christ who has given us thy mother mary whose wondrous image we venerate to be our mother ever ready to succor us grant we beseech thee that we who earnestly implore her maternal aid may deserve to enjoy perpetually the fruit of thy redemption who lives and reigns world without end amen boss once during a zoom meeting asked his employees very sarcastically so you guys are now all enjoying this flexible working hours and one of the employees after making sure he turned the mute on said the only thing flexible is that we have to decide which 20 hours of the day he makes us work well i won't tell you which side of the fence i was in that call but the reality is today's work atmosphere work environment is becoming increasingly complex some of us have just tremendous load too much of work everything is going crazy and on the other side there is recession there is job cuts there is job loss there is income loss uh, so it's it's a crazy world i mean economists use the term vuca volatility uncertainty complexity and ambiguity to define the workplace of today and more true than ever before is this year 2021 where we are in the second wave hit by all sorts of problems on every side because what started as a healthcare crisis quickly turned into an economic crisis and has now snowballed into a humanitarian crisis and in that context we turn to joseph who is the role model for workers what an interesting time when the workplace itself is getting threatened when jobs and industries and salaries and businesses and revenues and profits are getting hammered, St. Joseph seems to shine a light on the situation for you and me. Yes, I am a workman as well. Unlike all the others who've been preaching before, even I was told, wear your cassock. And then I said, no, I'm just a father, but a father of two children. And so we are here today to reflect on what St. Joseph has for people like you and me who are in the workplace and are trying to see how God is guiding us. And so we will use the word Joseph uh, and use the Joseph the worker. He's known as St. Joseph the worker. So let's use the word workers to see what St. Joseph is looking at. W-O-R-K-E-R. -E let's take those six different attributes and see the hidden clue that St. Joseph is giving us. So the first, W for worship. Joseph always put God first. 
Whatever he did, Jesus came first in Joseph's life. Joseph's life revolved around Jesus. That is what worship is. Worship is not a slow song. Worship is not deep breaths. Worship is not a posture. Worship is not lying down prostrate or raising your hands up. Worship is an attitude of the heart. Putting God first. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and everything will be added unto you. The word add is the same as Joseph. In Genesis 30.24, the word Joseph is first heard. And the word Joseph means God will add. God will increase. And in this time where the salaries are reducing, where the share prices are falling, where the jobs are getting retrenched, everything seems to be reducing, Joseph is giving us the encouragement that God will add. And so we are called to live that life of worship, putting God first in our life, letting God be God. Don't be God and tell him, Lord, I want this, I want this interview, I want this job, I want this promotion. No. That's very small of us to tell God what to do. Let God be God in our life. Allow him to take control. So beautifully in the prayer of the Navina, we say, I hope in thee, I love thee above all things, with all my soul, with all my heart, with all my strength. That is worship. The W. Let's now look at O. Remember we are doing W-O-K-E-R. O. O for obedience. Joseph's life was characterized by obedience. Joseph, get up and take Mary to be your wife. Done. Joseph, take the baby and his mother and flee to Egypt. Done. Joseph, bring the baby and the mother back. Done. Joseph, go uh, to, to Jerusalem three times a year because of the, uh, the, relig the religious rituals or practices of that time. Done. Joseph followed everything. Joseph was entirely obedient and prompt. Are you and I in the workplace prompt, dependable? Can people say, if I tell so-and-so this to be done, I can just close my eyes and forget about it because he will do it? Are you and I that responsible and dependent? Because Joseph was. Joseph was told and promptly he would get up and do it. And probably for the workplace, Joseph is giving us that model, the role model for us of being obedient. And one of the clues to being obedient is to be attentive to the voice of Jesus. This is what Joseph says about obedience. Don't check your phone or don't check the volume or your Wi-Fi. I'm just pulling your leg. I didn't say anything because the Bible does not record Joseph as saying anything. Joseph doesn't have a single recorded word in the Bible and maybe there's a clue there linking Joseph's silence with Joseph's obedience. Probably we do not hear the word of God talking to us because we are talking all the time. And a clue there for us from Joseph is sometimes to just shut up and allow God to speak and when God speaks, to obey. Because as we sing in the Navina. I wander in a fragile bark over life's tempestuous sea. Our lives are being tossed about in this boat that we are all in. And yet, some of us may remember last month, there was this big storm uh, that came across Mumbai and Goa and, and headed to Gujarat. And we realized the power of the wind and we are in that storm in the workplace, many of us. And Joseph gives us an assurance to be attentive to God's voice, to obey God's voice. So W, you remember? Worship. O, obedience. Let's now look at R, rest. One thing we know from reading scripture is that Joseph slept. Many of us, either because of too much of work pressure or the stress of finding a job, a stress of being placed, a stress of a promotion, are unable to sleep. Nausea, insomnia, migraine, blood pressure, all of these are fruit, are effects of that root of stress. 
And Joseph gives us a very simple, profound yet simple example. What God did in the book of Genesis, rested. After we work, there is need for rest. And Joseph gives us a clue that we need to rest. Pope Francis has on his table a statue of the sleeping Joseph. And he says before he goes to bed every night, he writes down his plans, his problems, his pain points, and keeps them at the feet of St. Joseph in that statue. Knowing that as Joseph rests in God's arms, so can St. Pope Francis rest, that God is in control. So many times the scripture tells us, do not be afraid, fear not, do not be afraid. Scripture scholars tell us that there are 365 times the word do not be afraid that come up in the Bible. What a great providence we have in that. Pointing us that one for each day of the year, or maybe even more than 365, but God wants to constantly assure us, do not be afraid, I have carved you on the palm of my hand, so rest in my love. And so beautifully we sing, during the Navina, when we welcome the Holy Spirit, and in our soul, take up thy rest. We want God to rest in us so that we can rest in God. We come to K, keep the faith. So many things around us, as we've heard, we are in this tempestuous bark, in this tempestuous sea, where everything is being tossed around. Our life is like this uh, chaos that's happening around us and yet Joseph gives us a clue always confident always trusting in Jesus even though your workplace must be like the snakes and ladders game sometimes up sometimes down in our case sometimes there are more snakes and ladders and we have names for each of those snakes as well maybe a co-worker maybe a boss uh, or maybe someone who's giving us too much of grief a bad customer and yet Joseph too had ups and downs in his life. Joseph take the baby and flee. Joseph the child is going to be attacked by Herod. Joseph do this, Joseph do that. Joseph the lady you have betrothed to is with baby now. So many challenges in Joseph's life. Yet he kept trusting, he kept the faith. You and I are called and why? Again we know in the Navina, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. That is what faith is. Knowing that the Lord who made heaven and earth, the galaxies and the Milky Ways and the planets and everything that it contains, right down to that invisible microscopic thing that is in the air and we see how oxygen today, which is freely available, is such a prized commodity. And so that God who made heaven and earth is our helper. Our help is in the name of the Lord. John 15, 14, 16 says, the Holy Spirit is our helper. And so we say our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And it's difficult to trust sometimes. And yet we sing, senses cannot grasp this marvel, faith must serve to compensate. So many times we've sung these words, prayed these words, Navina after Navina, Wednesday after Wednesday. But it's all going through one year and coming out of the other. It's not going into our hearts and bearing root. And the fruit of that root is faith. And so we've seen W, you forgotten? Worship, O, obedience, R, for rest, K, for keep the faith, E, for excellence. Joseph was known for what he did. He was a famous carpenter in Nazareth. They all said, he's Joseph's son. They identified immediately with the quality of his work. Like you say, hey, you want your bike repaired? Go to Alistair. You want a sound technician? Go to Dwayne. You want uh, this really great food dish made? Go to Sunita. That's the type. We need to be able to use every gift and talent that God has given us and be excellent. Romans 16, 19 says, be excellent at what you do. Can people trust us in the workplace saying that so-and-so will be excellent? I do not even have to check his work because he will make sure it's done perfectly. I don't need to follow up because I know that he has committed to his work. And therefore, we are called to be excellent at what we do. 
And so beautifully we pray before you to guide you. May the Lord be before you to guide you, after you to guard you, above you to bless you. Every Navina, we pray for that excellence of the Holy Spirit, the excellence of Jesus, the excellence of Abba Father. Do we really allow that excellence to become part of our life? If you look up on Google, you will find, you can search St. Joseph, Santa Fe, New Mexico, staircase. There is a, a convent there where the nuns hadn't put up a staircase and they prayed to St. Joseph and this man appears with his carpentry tools and builds it. You can read the rest online. But it's fascinating to see how excellent a workman Joseph was and you and I are called to emulate. And the last letter we look at today is R to reach out. It's not enough to get all the blessings for ourselves. Navina after Navina, Mother Mary is praying for us. Our Lady of Perpetual Help, the greatest warrior, the greatest creature ever made by God is on our side, is my mother. And so many blessings come to me. And yet I am called not to keep them for myself, but to reach out. We are living in a hurting world. Everywhere you look, people are hurting. In your own family, people are hurting. If you look in the mirror, also you will find a hurting person. And yet we are called to bring that good news to others, the joy to others. Tell people about Jesus like Mary did at Cana. Listen to Jesus, point to Jesus all the time. But you may say, I'm not even a Christian. I just come because Mother Mary blesses me. And I tell you, if there was a new geo free offer, would you not tell your friends? Or you would say, but I'm not related to the Ambani, so why should I tell? Or if there was a new movie come out, Radhe, would you not tell others and say, go watch this movie or don't watch this movie? You would, right? You would not say, I'm not related to Salman, therefore I'm not telling. So the same thing, if you have enjoyed, if you have experienced a miracle, a blessing, a great presence of God in your life through the intercession of Mary, then please go out and share the good news. You are not telling people to convert, but you're sharing them something that is dear to you, precious to you, that has made a difference in your life. Bring the joy of Jesus to others. Bring the joy and the help of the Holy Spirit to others. And bring the relationship of Abba Father with others. And therefore we say in the Navina, Mary help in pain and sorrow, soothe those racked on bed of pain. Let us bring into the arms of the mother all those who are racked with pain, because in thy arms thy child thou bearest, source of all thy joy and woe. The joy of Jesus is the joy of Mary. The woe of Jesus not being shared with others is the woe of Mary. May you and I, her children, bring more children to the arms of Mary so that she can point them all to Jesus. The Memorare. Remember, Remember a most, most gracious, gracious Virgin Mary, Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or saw thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the world incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. Merciful Lord, whose mercies are without number and whose goodness is without end, you abide with your people in a wondrous manner and are with us all days, even to the end of time. By your kindly presence, direct our minds. With your guiding love, watch over our paths. With your powerful help, deliver us from every tribulation from all danger and sin, that we may on earth always live with you and in you, and in your eternal dwelling, enjoy your presence forever. Amen. Our help 
is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Lord hear my prayer. And let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Grant we beseech to you, O Lord God, that these thy servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body. And by the glorious intercession of Blessed Mary ever Virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and enjoy eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be amongst you to defend you, within you to preserve you, before you to guide you, after you to guard you, above you to bless you, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Through the intercession of our Mother of Perpetual Sakha, may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us the memorial of your passion. Grant that we may so reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that the taste of the fruit of your redemption may ever be within us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The divine praise is all together. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. 
Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary Most Holy. Blessed be a holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.